The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Amber Bell here with Real Agriculture. For this episode of Canola School, we're going to be talking with Clint Yerke of BASF about yield targets, how to set them, how to measure them, and why they're important. So get ready for the conversation. So let's just jump into the meat of this. Um, what are the average yield targets in Saskatchewan typically? Like what are people looking for? It really depends upon your uh, on your soil zone and and where you're farming. Like we we know that um, yields can fluctuate all the way from 20 bushels up to 80 bushels within the province of Saskatchewan and and mo- and all three prairie provinces really. And um, and so it it's um, what we would like to communicate at, at at the Canola Council is is really encouraging growers to think uh, really seriously about what their yield targets potentially could be. Um, what we do know is that um, <clears throat> oftentimes when we ask farmers what they would like to get in their fields, it's often a lot higher than what they actually do get, and, and that's no surprise. But there, there are a number of things that, that we can do to, uh, to take a, a more systematic process in, in which we can uh, try achieving what, what we would really like to see in, in the field. And so looking at what producers are kind of looking for right now, how does that trend historically? What, what have they looked for in the past comparatively? So when we're, when we're looking at uh, canola yields, uh, actually we've seen a, a really nice increase in canola yields right across the, the country, right from the Red River Valley to the Peace River of uh, increasing yields right from 2000 up until right around 2016. And now yields have kind of gone flat since then. And so um, likely what, what we're looking at is, is mostly due to weather, that, that yields have increased. But we also do know that, that farmers have been uh, investing more into their, their canola crop, uh, investing more into the fertility, uh, more into uh, inputs, uh, crop protection products, and, and, and that type of thing. And so we have seen a really nice steady increase in yields, but they have uh, plateaued a little bit recently. Okay, so with that kind of trend, you mentioned that yield targets are, can be anywhere from 20 to 60, 70. Yeah. Um, what are some of the biggest factors for whether or not a producer is going to actually meet the targets that they, they set? Well, weather is, is, is the number one uh, factor, but uh, the, the number two factors and number three, there, there are agronomic choices. So when, when we're looking at canola, uh, crop rotation has, has a big influence on that. We do know that the tighter the crop rotations get, uh, the lower that the yields uh, do start uh, decreasing. We see a, a couple of percentage uh, points decrease uh, going from like a, a three-year rotation, like a two-year break from canola, down to a, a two-year rotation, like a one-year break. Um, crop rotations have a, a big influence. Um, fertility programs have a, have a huge influence. And when we look at fertility numbers, we actually are seeing that a lot of farmers maybe aren't fertilizing to what the uh, the yield potential of, of the area potentially could be. Where we are here, just outside of Lloydminster, like uh, it's pretty pretty possible to get a 60 bushel yield. Um, but we do know that a lot of farmers are are fertilizing at 90 pounds of nitrogen, as an example. That only puts you in the 40 bushel range, and so um, there is upwards potential, but. Those additional costs always do bring concerns like financial risk and, and things like that. So that's the, the balance that, that farmers always have to have to play with. Mm-hmm. And what would be your recommendation for knowing exactly how much nitrogen you should put in, be putting out on your fields? Well, step one, and no one likes to hear it for some reason, is, is, is to, to do a soil test mm-hmm. uh, to get a good understanding of, of what your, your background fertility is, uh, what you do need to add. And then, then there, we do have a lot of tools that are available to us uh, in, in the ag industry here in Canada that uh, like uh, nutrient removal calculators are available so that if you are getting a 60 bushel yield, you can see exactly how much of that nitrogen you are shipping off of your farm, how much of that potassium that you're shipping off. And, and so using those numbers and your soil test numbers and just even looking at what the recommendations are by the soil testing labs will help you uh, dial in your fertility a lot more. Working with a, with a good agronomist 
uh, will be a, a huge advantage as well to helping you determine what is, is going to be the best uh, fertility rates uh, for your farm. But there are other things as well that, that can have an influence on, say our, our yield target is, is 60 and here in, in the black soil zone and we're only getting 50. Well, at the end of the year, it's probably a good idea to take a close look at what took away that yield. Why did I, what, what's the gap? Was it just rainfall? Was it too many hot days in July? Or was it some agronomic choices? Um, was it the fertility program or did we miss some insects that uh, maybe caused some problems? Was black leg a problem? This is one of our, our bigger diseases that, that consistently takes away yield. Getting some measures and having an understanding of why you did not hit what your yield target is, is going to help really out with uh, making uh, better decisions going ahead for future years. Is there a tool available that can help producers figure out exactly where that yield gap is, is coming into play? Any tools? Well, Canola Encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> it has all the information around crop production, but um, talking to experts, I think, is, is likely going to be one of the, the better, like uh, having a, a good agronomist that's going to be able to help you out with understanding uh, where, what pests are in the field that uh, potentially could be having an impact on your, on your yields and ultimately your profitability, and really looking at that fertility pa uh, package. I wish there was just a calculator. Right? You could put like something will just help figure yeah, it out. That, that'll do everything. Um, I guess a big part of that comes down to going out in your field and scouting throughout the season too, right? Spending time in the field knowing exactly what's happening is your best investment. And the more you can put your shadow, as, as one of my colleagues uh, likes to say, your best investment is your shadow. Um, the more you can put that in the field, the better off you're going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned earlier that weather comes into play, you know, that the last few years have kind of changed things because of the weather. So are there strategies that producers can put into play to mitigate some of the adverse effects on what weather will do to yield targets? Yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? Like, uh, what can we do to weatherproof your, your crop? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to reference a, a research study that was done a number of years ago by, by Ag Canada where they looked at the value of, of uh, all of the inputs that, that you can invest in in, in your crop. Herbicides, uh, fungicides, um, fertility, seed, um, seeding rates. They, they looked at the, the whole gamut and tried to determine which one of these components, which one of these inputs provides the most value. And the, the conclusion was is that you need to have all of the values to really maximize your profitability. And, and so oftentimes like we'll have growers that are, we know that we're coming into some adverse conditions. What, what can I dial back? Should I dial back a little bit on my nitrogen, maybe on my plant population? What, we, what came out of this, uh, this study, and it was a big study, it was multi-year, multi-location, and... Uh, it, it showed that when you start cutting back on your inputs, you're cutting back on your profit. So sure, you're cutting your costs, but you're actually taking more money out of your pocket in, in the end as soon as you start dialing back. So <clears throat> what we learned out of that is, is that you need to uh, fully invest in your canola crop to really maximize your profitability, even in the adverse years. Like the yield gap actually got larger for whenever there was stressful conditions, mm. that um, the the profitability actually went up if you had the, the full package of, of inputs uh, in stressed years. So how do we how do we weatherproof our, our crops? It's just following the best management practices. Un unfortunately, there isn't any real magic uh, bullet that that we can use that that's going to fix all of our problems if we have diseases or insects or anything like that. It's, it's um, just following all of the, the best management recommendations and that is what's going to buffer the, the weather and the, the extremes that, that we see in, in a growing season. Right, and how much does things like direct seeding or um, rotation, how do, much does that come into play when it comes to managing some of the adverse weather conditions? Well, yeah, so uh, direct seeding, uh, minimum till, zero till, these are, are long known to be like uh, one of the best things that we can be doing. Uh, that's a great way of, of, of managing your, uh, your risk for moisture loss and, and ensuring that there is uh, moisture, particularly in dry times. So that um, 
that is definitely one of the, the best management practices. So yeah, having a, a, a diverse crop rotation is as well uh, provides a lot of uh, yield increase. Um, it's it's good for all crops, like right. uh, having um, having a, a two or three year break in between uh, each crop. Uh, it manages diseases. It adds mm -hmm. uh, more diversity to uh, uh, in terms of um, what's happening in the soil. And so. Um, yeah, all of these things are part of the, the best management practices. So if we can follow these, then, then we're going to have a uh, much more profitable crop. Okay, so that is a lot of information to take in. Uh, it's been really good. Do you have any words of encouragement for producers going into this growing season? Well, yeah, so we, we talked a bit about scouting. So spending as much time as you can in the field to get a good understanding of, of how your crop is advancing. And, and so we talk all about this in terms of canola, but really any crop, and mm -hmm. the better that you know that. And I know that a lot of growers have a lot of land in which to try covering. If you don't have the time to, to spend time in the field, like see if you can get some, some help with it, because uh, really knowing what's happening is, is going to only help you out with, uh, with uh, becoming more profitable in, in the long term. That's great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And that was Clint Yerke on Real Agriculture.